Yeah, because the next speaker doesn't really need an introduction, of course. So he figured he would just start his talk, but I'm going to give him an introduction anyway. It's our very own Job Snyders. As you know, uh, he is uh, into BGP, uh, one of the more interesting projects in the past uh, few years that Job has been doing was uh, drawing a cat picture based on announcements and withdrawals. <laughs> I, yeah, a remarkable feat, remarkable. So I wonder what he's up to today. Job Snyders. Thank you, Niels. Um, I will talk to you about BGP graceful shutdown. This is not related to the uh, cease and desist or notice and takedowns that we were discussing earlier. This is a talk to encourage everyone in this room that operates an autonomous system to implement a very small routing policy feature. All right, what is BGP graceful shutdown? BGP graceful shutdown is a very simple procedure to mitigate negative effects of maintenance. It can be combined with uh, RFC 8203, the BGP shutdown communication, which is uh, a way of transferring emojis from your router to the other person's router. Um, it can be part of the operational procedures outlined in the BGP session calling internet draft. And what it is, in essence, is a make-before-break mechanism. And this is crucial because every time you shut down BGP sessions today without this mechanism, you risk briefly breaking uh, the surface for your users until the path is made whole again. Graceful shutdown does not help against unplanned outages, uh, and it should not be confused with graceful restart, uh, which is a psychopathic way of uh, doing maintenance. The context is that when two organizations really like each other and they set up an eBHP session, that they do this for the purpose of transferring bits and bytes from, from their network to the other person's network. And the moment you agree to set up peering with each other, be it in a, a vendor-customer relation or a lateral peering relation, um, I assume you actually want to exchange packets. And this is where graceful shutdown uh, fits in. It facilitates uh, reduction of packet loss for maintenances. So what is wrong with a regular BGP session shutdown? I've made a, a very uh, uh, compelling uh, diagram. On the bottom, we have uh, a green network. That's uh, the, the peer that wants to initiate the maintenance. To the right, there is a, a red line uh, to the, the right AOS border router. That is a particular eBTP session that will go down. Now what happens when you type shut down is that the ASBR on the right side will see the session go down and it will generate withdrawals for that particular route. And it will spread the withdrawals in its network, for instance, to a route reflector saying this path to this prefix no longer exists and that the withdrawal was generated because of the session shutdown. Then the route reflector in the top of the diagram starts looking for an alternative path. Perhaps it already even had uh, uh, an alternative path. Um, and it announces this back to the ASPR on the right side to signal, well, this is the new best path that I'm familiar with. And in that brief moment between the ASPR generating the withdrawal saying, I don't have this route anymore, the route reflector has to do some calculations and then give information back. And during that phase, there is no path on that router, which means that router will black hole packets destined for the prefixes that the peer on the bottom of the diagram was announcing. These are very brief uh, periods, but they can last longer depending on the hardware in your network. If you're running under GRS because you have too many eBHP sessions and the control plane cannot keep up, or if you uh, were wise enough to invest in, let's say, an MX80, uh, these brief periods may become longer periods, and that is detrimental to the experience. What happens if you use graceful shutdown is that the peer on the bottom 
will, uh, before shutting down the session, first announce all its prefixes with a special well-known BHP community. The BHP community is called Graceful Shutdown. And what the presence of this community signals to the ASBR on the right side is lower the local preference as low as you can. And funny enough, what happens the moment you do this, I signal to the ASBR, hey, uh, the prefixes have the well-known community. The ASBR lowers the local preference of the particular path, but keeps forwarding packets because the path is still installed. It will distribute or propagate that update within its own autonomous system. It will tell the route reflector, this is the new local preference of this route, and hey, this well-known community is attached. The route reflector will also lower the local preference uh, and start looking for a different path. And the moment it has found a new best path, it will announce it back to the ASPR, because part of the BHP protocol is that you announce your best paths to, to each other. At the moment, the ASPR on the right received a better path from the route reflector. It will continue forwarding packets, but it no longer relies on the BHP session that is about to be shut down. Once that convergence happens, the session can be safely shut down and there will be no packet loss. And this is the make before break element. You instruct your adjacent networks, I am going away, this path will not exist a few minutes from now. Uh, the routers start converging, they install the second best path, or what at that moment becomes the best path, and then you shut down your session and commence your maintenance. Uh, so I've written down the steps on, on the left side and the right side. Uh, let's go over it again. Normal shutdown, you shut down the session, withdrawals are generated, the withdrawals trigger hunting for new best paths, and that information is communicated back to the routers that reported that the path was withdrawn. With graceful shutdown, you signal that the path will go away, that triggers path hunting. When new best paths are distributed, then you can safely uh, start generating the, the uh, withdrawals if, if they are even necessary in that reg uh, regard. Um, so how does this work on a uh, operational uh, level? To support receiving the graceful shutdown community, all you need to do is update your eBGP routing policies and simply match that if you see that well-known community, lower the local preference to zero. That's all. That's all you need to do to support uh, other people uh, doing graceful shutdown. To make use of the graceful shutdown uh, uh, mechanism yourself, before you shut down a session, update your routing policy to attach that well-known community to the prefixes you're announcing, Wait a few minutes for the network to settle for everybody to do their path hunting, and then proceed to shut down your sessions. Um, keep that community on the prefixes as long as you're busy with the maintenance, because effectively it's a traffic drain, uh, and once you're done with your maintenance, everything is back up, then you remove the uh, graceful shutdown well-known community. So in other words, although in your routing policies, this is very simple. If community lower local preference, what in reality happens is, hey guys, I'm going away, start looking for a best, new best path. And once you have it, awesome, because this session is going down. Um, configuration examples. Uh, feel free to download the slides uh, later and copy paste this. Uh, but it is really as simple as looking for is the community present on the prefix? If yes, lower the local preference. That is all, it takes two lines. And I recommend that you implement this on each and every eBHP session, to your transit providers, to your customers, to your peers. The moment you have an eBHP session with them, you want to forward packets. Therefore, you should also allow them the opportunity to do graceful maintenance. And even, Classic iOS will support this feature if you uh, implement what is on the, the right side. Every, every BGP speaker can do this. 
Uh, an example on iOS XE uh, that is uh, quite neat in my opinion. As I mentioned earlier, if you want to initiate the maintenance, you have to put the community on the prefixes, wait a bit, and then you shut down the session. So that's two actions. Update the routing policy, shut down the sessions. What iOS exceeded is they kind of scripted those operational steps into uh, a single set of commands. If you type in graceful maintenance activate, it will put the community on all the prefixes it's announcing, it will wait, it sets an internal timer, and then it automatically, after say 300 seconds or so, uh, shuts down the BGP session. Not every BGP implementation has this scripted procedure. So for instance, on Junos, you will need to do two commits. Maybe we can write a Slack script to automate that process. Um, uh, on BERT, you will need to reload the daemon twice. Uh, and I hope as we uh, start to popularize this feature, that more and more operating systems will make it much easier to do a, a graceful shutdown compared to a regular shutdown. Um, so to, to put money where my mouth is, NTT has uh, implemented this feature and on each and every eBHP session, regardless of whether you are our competitor, regardless of whether you are our valued customer, uh, we will facilitate other people to do graceful shutdowns. To reduce the amount of packet loss initiated by maintenance actions. Um, in other words, any prefix that reaches our backbone that has that community set will lower the local preference to zero. So even if you're not our direct customer, but say a customer of one of our peering partners or a customer of a customer, since this is a transitive attribute, you can signal to ASNs further away that the path will disappear. And maybe the intermediate ASN does not have an alternative path at that moment, but because they propagate the, the update to NTT, an entity then, then lowers the local preference, does the path hunting, finds a new best path, they may announce a better path back to where they received uh, this path from. Uh, and that means that we can actually help each other uh, find new paths. So this is not something that is confined to the boundary uh, between two ASNs. This is an internet-wide mechanism uh, to signal that paths will disappear shortly from now. So my question to you is, uh, would you allow us to do graceful shutdowns to reduce the amount of packet loss? Um, I, for some of us, this may deviate from our standard operating procedures where we say, Settlement-free peering partners shall not have any access to traffic engineering features because that is a feature set we reserve for our customers. Uh, but I would argue we should deviate from that particular uh, style of policy and make an exception to allow each other to do uh, hitless maintenance. Uh, there's a number of networks that have also implemented this. GTT, GitHub, Nordunet, Coloclu, MCO, BIT, uh, some of them, I, I twisted their arm a little bit so I can put them on the slide. Uh, but this is not, not uh, confined to a single network. I think every network should support these procedures. Uh, and I hope to see this list grow uh, over time. Uh, there's a ton of science, actual science, with research papers uh, made with uh, LaTeX. And uh, uh, it's for reals. This is a proven concept, and there are many, many scenarios in which you can temporarily have black holes in networks uh, if you simply shut down without using this mechanism. But since there are quite extensive uh, uh, papers, I would recommend that you read them at your leisure at some other point in time. This uh, concludes my call to action. Uh, I expect that by lunchtime, most of you will have deployed the update to your network. Uh, and if you start using this feature, if you uh, start asking your uh, vendors to, to make the scripted version that does a part of these steps automatically for you, uh, share that information on the NLNOC IRC channel so we can keep a little bit of track on uh, how we move forward on this. Thank you, Job. We have time for one short question. Uh, I see two people running to the mics. I was first, sorry. 
It's uh, uh, Greg Janoszka, Liberty Global. Uh, you meant uh, those networks implemented it, but did they implement lowering the local pref or uh, they are actively sending that community as well? This is an implementation of lowering the local pref when they receive uh, prefixes with the well-known community uh, from, from any eBHP session. But when you don't do it, when you don't send that community, when you do a maintenance, it's rather void, isn't it? Correct. Um, th it, this is kind of a chicken egg thing, right? You, you, we, we need to make it beneficial to use this community. And the only way to get there is to have actual implementations that will honor the community. And all we need to do is popularize this mechanism and provide tooling that makes it easy to use this. Okay. Um, Erik, please keep it short. It's, uh, it's the coffee time at stake here. Ah, okay. Uh, first of all, are you going to update uh, BHP filter guides uh, for this? Yes. Thank you. Uh, second. <laughs> um, what are the possible uh, uh, attack features that you might have by having a uh, accepting BGP communities uh, on your transit that basically have impact on your uh, preference for these routes? So, um, as with any uh, BGP policy implementation, there are uh, risks that you should consider. Uh, what it basically boils down to, if you use a hammer and you hit yourself on the finger, then don't do that. And lowering local preference in some scenarios can result in uh, uh, lack of reachability. Uh, so you should only use this if you are multi-homed and if you uh, uh, are doing maintenance and not do this permanently. Um, in NTT's case, we'll be monitoring for abuse and the monitoring is quite simple. We expect this community to be present on prefixes for, say, five to ten minutes or limited amounts of, of time. If we see that the community is used for days on end, uh, we'll have to investigate what is going on. Is this uh, uh, on purpose? Are you, are you trying to game the system in some way? We'll see. Uh, but I'm not too, too worried about it. Okay, thank you again, Job. And even for you, we have the famous NLNOC presenters present. Thank you.